Two Stuart 5A steam engines in the workshop, part one. Introduction. These engines look very similar, but they are not exactly the same. I'll start with the one on the left hand side. This belongs to a customer of mine in the USA. He bought it on eBay, sent it to me, I fitted the reversing gear and made it go. The way it's looking, this is going to come into my possession. I don't really want it, but it will make a good video series. When it first arrived, it was in a bit of a sorry state. I already made one series about fitting the valve gear, which also included fitting the oil pump and the mechanical lubricator. At the time, I was asked by the customer not to give it too much cosmetic attention, because originally he wanted to do that, but it appears that things have changed. That's the story so far for the one on the left. The one on the right has a different history. When I bought the Stuart Victoria that's in the background about three years ago, I also bought some parts for a 5A. Some of these parts were not serviceable, so they went in the bin. I fitted a brand new crankshaft to it, bought the relevant parts from Stuart models and machined them to fit the engine. I also bought the reversing gear castings, machined them and fitted them to the engine. And then I sold this engine to a customer in the UK who contacted me recently because he said he was emigrating and did I want to buy the engine back? And the answer was yes, and here it is. I have run this engine quite a lot, using both steam and compressed air. And now I think it's ready for a little bit of adjustment because it is tapping a bit as it's turning over slowly. Before I run the engine any further, it's time to lubricate the moving parts. And for this, I'm using Hallett Oil's general purpose steam lubricating oil, not steam oil. Here, I'm wiping away the surplus oil with a cloth. I'd like to show you something. Nothing special here, you may say. It's just a kitchen roll. But no, it's different. The perforations are much closer together, so you don't need to tear off quite as much at one go. I've never seen this in the kitchen rolls that I buy in the UK. You normally have to tear off quite a lot. To be honest, the valve timing of this engine is slightly retarded. I cannot get it to admit just before top dead centre. The noise you can hear in the background is my silent compressor, which is not exactly silent, but quieter than most. Back to the first Stuart 5A now and I'm lubricating all of the moving parts like I just did on the other one. Both of these engines are fitted with a crosshead lubricator. This is quite a good idea. It's just an oil tank with a pump on the top, and by moving the pump lever just once, lubricates the crosshead at both sides simultaneously. I've been running this engine on steam, so currently the tank is full of steam oil. That's why it's looking quite thick and gloopy. As you can see and hear in this clip, the engine runs better in one direction than the other. And this is very common with steam engines. They run better forward than in reverse for obvious reasons. I'm wiping some of the surplus oil away, using a piece of the American kitchen roll. In this view, you can also see that the engine is fitted with a crosshead lubricator and a mechanical lubricator like the other one. These ratchet type mechanical lubricators are both quite different. Even though I bought them from the same place, as usual, Blackgates Engineering, these lubricators were made by different manufacturers. But they work in the same way, and they both work well and lubricate the cylinder. This lubricator is of the type normally used on miniature steam locomotives. Here's the one on the other 5A, and as you can see, it is quite different. I've only just noticed that the bolt holding one of the paws in place is a bit loose. I need to tighten that up. Moving back to the other one, here it is in action. You can see the operation quite clearly. Generally speaking, mechanical lubricators driven from crankshafts over oil. But in this case, slightly too much cylinder lubrication is definitely preferable to not enough. Once I do the deal with the customer in the USA, I'm going to strip this engine down because there are one or two problems with it. 
All I did was fit the mechanical lubricator, the crosshead lubricator and the valve gear. In an attempt to get to the bottom of why these two Stuart 5A steam engines run quite differently, I'm taking some measurements. A steel tape measure is not ideal, but it tells me what I want to know. This measurement from the centre of the pin on the eccentric rod, which holds the expansion link, is slightly different on both engines. On the engine I built, the length between the centre of the pin to the end of the eccentric rod that fits onto the eccentric strap is one sixteenth of an inch longer than on the other engine, which probably explains the valve timing issue on the one that I made. Retarded valve timing is not desirable because early admission cushions the parts and stops any knocking. But it's not all bad news. The 5A that I built, the one on the right, runs much more slowly than the engine on the left. In this demonstration, I have very low air pressure coming out of the silicone rubber pipe. And first of all, I connect the pipe to the engine on the right, and off it goes. When I first finished this engine, it didn't knock at all, so I really think that the knocking is due to it needing its bearings taking up slightly. What I'm going to do now is pull the piece of silicone rubber tubing off the inlet to the steam chest on the engine on the right-hand side and move it to the inlet on the steam chest on the left-hand engine. In this clip it's clear to see that the engine doesn't really want to run on such low air pressure. Eventually though, it does sort of try. But the slow running of the engine on the right is far superior. And just in case some viewers must be thinking, oh well, it's obviously not got as much oil. But this clip showing the thorough lubrication of the engine took place before I connected the airline. I really am being a bit picky in the start of this series because at the end of the day, these are very powerful, small, full-size engines. And each of them will be capable of driving a small 20-foot long boat or a generator. Look closely at this clip, you'll see that the left-hand engine has a bent crankshaft. Normally with small steam engines, I straighten bent crankshafts with a soft hammer while the parts are in situ. But I'm definitely not going to do that on an engine of this size. The crankshaft needs to come out, then I will attempt to straighten it in the lathe. This clip shows a similar but different design and positioning of an oil tank with a pump on top of it. These small pumps are really nice things. Originally designed as water pumps for small model locomotives, they also make very good oil pumps for crosshead lubricators. After topping up the tank with some lubricating oil, I refitted the cap and now it's time for a high speed run on the right hand side engine. And that is it for this introduction episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.